Play to Potential podcast. A couple of questions as we wrap up, Raj. Mm-hmm. One is maybe uh, changing the topic uh, to children, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a parent of two young kids, uh, sure. 10, 10 and 6. What's, what's, your, uh, uh, what's been your uh, research around raising happy kids? What are some of the things uh, we should think about as parents? And where do you think people, uh, what are common places where you see people trip in the way they think about raising children? Uh, any, any insights there? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I actually just recently got a paper accepted that's coming out soon on uh, the impact of parental love that children get uh, experience uh-huh. when they are young and uh, the impact that that has on their future financial success. And we were very lucky to get hold of this data set um, uh, from Canada, which uh, followed the same set of um, respondents for about 25 years. Um, and uh, these respondents are about 35, 40 years old now. And we got them from right around when they were about five years old to about 15 years old. Um, and they wow. responded with four waves of uh, uh, surveys. And uh, the it collected lots of things, including uh, the level of love that these uh, children got as as uh, uh, as kids. Um, and, and, and the dependent variable is their financial success now, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Which we define as not just have, how much money they have uh, and how much money they perceive that they have. So subjective kind of um, success as well as uh, more, uh, more objective income level success um, and also stress, you know, how much um, uh, debt they have and how much, uh, you know, credit card loans they have and so on. And what we find is that there is a really significant positive effect of parental love, okay, parental nurturance that these children get as uh, kids um, and um, these respondents got as kids and uh, where they are now financially in their life, okay. Okay. So um, in answering this question, I think it's useful to think about two uh, kind of dimensions. Okay, one is the amount of love that um, children get, uh, which can be taken as, you know, whether the parents really truly deeply care for the children's well-being and um, are willing to kind of, you know, go out of their way to help them out. For example, you know, wake up at four in the morning if the children have to study and make them Horlicks or Bone Vita or whatever, you know, and um, uh, make sure that they're getting good quality sleep at night. Um, make good food for them, uh, you know, all, all kinds of normal things that you would think of, you know, in a, in a loving mm-hmm. house. Uh, so you can you can envision this graph in your head, one dimension, the vertical dimension being amount of love that the kids get, low to high. And the other dimension is the amount of discipline that they get, right? Um, mm-hmm. That are the rules in the house and do they have to follow the rules? And if they're not followed, uh, then they're disciplined, maybe through punishment, um, and maybe through um, other means, right? And so... Mm-hmm. Again, you can imagine low versus high, okay? And um, mm-hmm. these four cells that come out uh, have actually been named, uh, and the researcher that does a lot of work on this is, uh, or used to do a lot of work, maybe she's not doing anymore, is a person named Baumrind, B-A-U-M-R-I-N-D. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. so the high, high cell, right? High levels of mm-hmm. love, high levels of discipline. Um, that is called authoritative parenting, okay? Mm-hmm. High levels of discipline, low levels of love, and that's called authoritarian parenting. And you can think of uh, uh, Von Trapp, right? Um, mm-hmm. Is it Colonel Von Trapp? Uh, whatever, you know, so from uh, the sound, sound of, of music. Sound of music, of yeah. course. So he was authoritarian, right? I mean, a lot of discipline, mm-hmm. very little love until Maria comes into the household. Okay, and mm-hmm. uh, the, the low levels of love, low levels of um, authority, uh, discipline, that's called um, negligent parenting, where, you know, the, the, the kid is just abandoned, basically. No love, no discipline. Um, if you have read this um, short story called Junius Maltby, I think uh, that was probably negligent. Uh, actually, maybe that mm-hmm. is permissive, actually. You know, that's the fourth category, which is a lot of love um, and no discipline. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what we found is that as far as we could tell, um, the discipline dimension wasn't that significant at all in our study. Okay. So one of the things that we worry about is that if we don't discipline our kids when they're growing up, then they're going to end up being messed up. You know, they're not going to be able to um, be diligent in, in pursuing their passions. They're not going to put in those 10,000 hours and they're not going to be successful. They're going to fritter it all away. And that's a big, deep worry that a lot of parents have. Okay. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that discipline is not important, but I think it's a little bit less important than we think it is. Okay. And if it comes to a compromise or a trade-off between love and discipline, I think that love should always trump. Love should always trump, okay? And uh, sometimes what we do, and we are very good at this as, as human beings, 
is that in the garb of love, we end up passing what is actually uh, our pet desire, right? And so for mm. a, a very stark example of this, that, you know, um, we want our, our kids to really succeed in, let's say, playing the piano, right? And we give them like, you know, very harsh, um, meet out harsh punishment if they end up not practicing enough, you know, we, we, and, and we, we tell them that it's all for you. It's for you because, because I love you that I do this. Okay. So mm -hmm. in the art of love, we, we kind of end up being Martinets, strict Martinets that uh, are even willing to psychologically punish our kids uh, so that they achieve our goals. So I would say that as a parent, I think one thing you need to do is you need to kind of step back a little bit and ask yourself, oh, why do I want them to achieve this goal? And really be deep, like truly honest to yourself about why, right? And I think that many parents will discover that one of the reasons why they want their kids to achieve these goals is because they themselves did not achieve these goals, okay? So it's a kind of a vicarious way of fulfilling what happens to be your pet dream, and you want to, now that you failed in achieving it, and often it's the case that these parents themselves were probably subject to a lot of discipline um, without love from their parents. And at that point, um, they, did, they reacted violently against it uh, or passive aggressively against it. And they didn't learn to play the piano as a kid or mridangam or what have you. And now they're kind of regretting it and they wish that they, could, they had actually learned. Okay? Um, and they kind of you know, absorb that blame to some extent. And now they, they're, they're kind of like, they're like ragging, right? I mean, uh -huh. you, know, you just pass it on to the next generation, okay? Uh, there's a much, much better approach. And the approach is got to do with love, you know? So if you truly want your kids to achieve this thing, you know, they, you want them to achieve, um, you know, uh, great heights in piano, then why don't you learn it yourself right now, right? Sit down with them and practice with it rather than telling them, you know what, you go and practice next two hours, you're going to practice. I shouldn't hear a peep from you. I should only hear, hear you play the piano, Right. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. you're sitting there watching a uh, sitcom or, um, you know, uh, one of these shows, uh, soap operas on, on TV. What's that message, you know, to your kid? The message is that what they care about is my achievements, okay? And I'm only loved to the extent that I achieve things. That's not a good message to send to your kid, okay? It's going to mess them up. So you learn it yourself. You make it creative. Maybe tell them that, look, okay, let's um, figure out the song, okay, uh, the piano for the song. And we're going to sit down and I'll, I'll learn how to play the guitar or I'll sing. Okay. And I want you to kind of uh, learn the piano. Okay. And, and play the piano parts and sit down with them, help them out, make it a game, gamify it, um, have a lot of laughter, a lot of creativity, a lot of love. And that's a much better approach, much better parenting approach. Okay. So uh, it, it's a very big area, right? I mean, how to raise happy kids. Um, one of the other things that I would say very quickly is, uh, Transmit messages messages to them that um, nurture a sense of abundance in them rather than a scarcity mindset, okay? So if they come back from a game of uh, cricket, okay, rather than ask them, did you win? How much runs did you score? How many wickets did you take? Let the first question be, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy yourself, okay? Um, did you help other people out, okay? Uh, if you're playing a game in which that is relevant, like assists in basketball, okay? So hmm. those are much better questions. In fact, Adam Grant, um, you know, we talked about him quite a bit, right, earlier. Um, one of the practices that he has uh, on a daily uh, basis, I think, maybe weekly, but uh, certainly weekly, if not daily basis, is to ask his children, who, who did you help out? Who are the three people you helped out today, right? Because he knows that helping other people out is a much more reliable determinant of success than um, striving for um, superiority over other people. And so in a similar vein, we know that abundance-minded people are not just happier, they're more successful as well. So encourage the sense of abundance, okay? Ask them uh, if they're pursuing their passion, if they're having fun, if they're enjoying themselves, if they're helping other people out, rather than um, encouraging social comparisons. You know, don't ask the child, okay, how come you're not reading big books like Amy does? You know, she's already finished the Harry Potter series and here you are still reading, you know, uh, Tintin or something. Uh, so mm. those kinds of things, you know, in the short run, it might make the kid insecure and make them pursue, um, you know, goals. But in the long run, you're really messing them up. That's not a very good strategy at all. 